Good morning guys, welcome to this first devlog. It's already been two weeks since we started to work on that little project and I wanted to show you how it looks. Uh, it's not really two full weeks, it was more 28-ish hours, but it's still uh, we still have a good amount of progress and I thought it would be interesting to share the progress we have right now. Before jumping into it, I just want to let everybody know that I'm streaming the whole process, uh, pretty much the whole process actually, because I'm working a little bit here and there, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes here and there, but I'm streaming pretty much the whole process right here on this channel on YouTube. Uh, you can pass by whenever you want. Uh, I know I'm streaming like at random hours right now, but, but if you see that I'm streaming and you want to pass by, just chatting a little bit, if you have comments, questions or anything, just pass by, it will be pretty appreciated. Anyway, let's get this started. First, what is that project exactly? It's actually a little mix between a clicker and a building game. So the player is going to start in a small world with a super limited amount of resources. He's going to have to click on stuff, generate some resources, and with those resources, he'll be able to uh, build some structures. The more structure he's building, the more resources he's going to get, and the more resources he's going to get, he's going to be able to expand his world the more and more. The way I see it is like an island, so the player will be able to build and expand that island. The more his island grows, it, it will probably be able to reach another island somewhere. Uh, that island will have more resources, uh, different kinds of resources, maybe some structures that are already there, and maybe even some NPCs. These NPCs will help him to generate more resources by just uh, basically helping him to generate those resources or maybe uh, trading with him or maybe giving him some quests that will give him some resources in exchange. And then once we have all these basic mechanics, we can just slap some achievement on top of that and then we have a game. So that's pretty much it. So it's pretty much the idea I have for the game. Uh, to me, it's pretty interesting because I spent way too many hours playing uh, games like Cookie Clicker or maybe uh, City Skylines or a game like this, where we have to use those resources to build our world. But if you have any comments, questions, or maybe mechanic ideas, you can just leave them in the comments. We're gonna discuss about them, and maybe together we can make a really nice game, actually. For the target platforms, it's obviously gonna work on PC, because it's the platform I'm using for development, but the main target is gonna be Android, and iOS maybe in the future. For the Android side, I have two phones. Here, uh, I have a pretty old Alcatel Idol One Touch. Uh, I want my game to be able to run on older devices, if possible, so we'll see uh, what we can do with that. I also have an LG G6. Uh, this is my current phone, but it's gonna be replaced soon, so I'm gonna buy a new phone, and I'm probably also gonna buy a tablet uh, if everything goes well, so uh, we're gonna have like multiple devices to play with them. And for the iOS side, if we get there sometime in the future, I have an iPad here, and I also have an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 12 somewhere in the house. I don't know where they are right now, but uh, I have some devices that we can play with. Okay, now let's get to the interesting part. So these two first weeks were more about the project creation and the whole setup, uh, and then creating the basic mechanics of the game. So the first step was to create the repo. Uh, so I have it here, right here. Uh, I just have a couple little comments right now, but it's getting there. It's slowly getting there. And then we created the Unread project, and then we had to make sure that it worked for Android. So uh, to make sure that it worked for Android, we just followed the Unreal documentation. So here I have the page Android Quick Start, uh, which tells you how to set up the device and then set up the project settings for them to work uh, to be able to package uh, for Android. So uh, you can just follow these uh, little steps and it will uh, the package should work. But, 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 there's also another page that you have to do. It's the setting up the SDK. So it's pretty straightforward. You just have to download Android Studio and then it should work. But if you're doing it, just make sure to download Android Studio 3.5.3 as the other version won't work. And then after we were done following all these steps, we were able to have an empty app on the device, which is a small start, but it's a start. Now that we have the whole initial setup done, we can simply go in Unreal and have some fun. So this is it. This is the project. It's so nice. If I press play, it's a little bit better. There's some assets here and there, but it's still not too much of a big game. It's pretty basic for now. In these two weeks, we had the time to code three main elements of the game, which are uh, the inputs in the first place. So 
the input. If I move on Windows with WASD, I can move the camera around. And then I can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. But since we wanted to have the game also work for mobile, I had to make sure that the finger could move the camera. So if I click and I move the mouse, it also moves the camera around. And the zoom, which I cannot do on Windows, is performed with two fingers on the screen on the mobile device. So these are the first inputs. Uh, it's pretty simple, but, but it's the most important part of the game. Then I wanted to set up the save system, since it's a pretty important part of the game too, since we are constantly going to save the current state of the old world. So uh, the first thing I wanted to save is the position of the player. So let's say I move the camera over here. I can save the game. And then if I stop and play again, the position of the camera is saved right here. Same thing, if I zoom on that little bush right here, I can just save it. And then if I reload the game, the camera move right back here. And finally, the third thing we had the time to do this week is the build system. A little bit of the build system. It's not complete yet, but the, the basics are there. At the bottom here, we have two circles. The green one is the nature stuff. So there's like bushes, a little tree, and some other trees here and there. And the blue one is the structure category, which for now just contain a simple fence. Let's say we want to build a tree. Uh, we can just take it and drag it around. It creates like the logo of the tree following the finger or the mouse. And then if you put it in the, in the scene, it spawns a tree. If you put it back on the user interface, it goes back to a simple icon and nothing will be spawned. Let's say if I drop the tree right here. But let's say we really want to have a tree. So I'm just going to put it in the scene. Here we go. We have a tree. Uh, kind of. It's more like tree little square. That's a little bit weird. But let's say we click on it. Oh, something changes. And then if we click and click and click, oh, the tree takes shapes. So we now have a tree. So yeah, I was thinking that the player would have to uh, choose what he want to build, place it in the scene, and then click on it to build it. The amount of clicks will depend on the rarity of the object or uh, how far he is in the game and depending how strong his clicks are. But I thought it would be interesting to uh, have a little building animation for everything. So for now it's just scaling, it's not really a build animation, but then we, in the future we can have a different animation that can play uh, depending on which objects you are trying to build. Another thing is that you may have noticed is that if I take let's say a bush and I try to place it right over the other bush. You can see that the bounding box is turning red. If I drop it here, it doesn't work. You have to put it somewhere that is uh, buildable, like it's available. So if I'm on top of the other trees, it doesn't work. If I am on top of the fence, it won't work either. So I can just put it right where there's some empty space. Everything is on the grid, so it's easy to align everything, even the small objects with the big ones because the trees are big. Et voilà. The last thing I coded is the fence. So the fence is a little bit special. So if you place a fence in the scene, you can see that you just have like one little square, which is weird. If you build it, it just gives you a pike. But then if you take another fence and you put it beside it and you build it completely, there's like a little, a little piece of wood that appears between both objects you placed. So now you can build another fence, another one, so you can uh, build pretty much the shape you want for your fence. Let's say if you want to have like uh, a couple squares connected to each other uh, with some animals in there maybe later. Uh, if we have some animals in the game, which we probably gonna have. So yeah, so you can just like build some little sp spaces for all your animals and other stuff. So that's pretty much what we can build for now. It's pretty simple. And the nice thing about this is that you can just save your game and then if you stop and play again, all your objects are back and they keep the same amount of building they already had. So if they were completely built, they are still going to be completely built. But if they are just partially built, they are going to keep that partially built state. So here we go. So this is pretty much it. A little fun thing that I have right now is that if I click outside of Unreal and I remove the focus from the window, uh, the camera starts to uh, explode and then everything is lost again. But if I click back in Unreal, the camera should come back. And then I click away for two seconds. 
doop, 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 doop. And it's gone. And if I click back, whoop, it came back. So yeah, that's pretty much what I had the time to do this in these two weeks. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, just let me know in the comments. And if you have any mechanic suggestions or any improvement that you would like to see in that game, just let me know and I'm gonna probably implement them because the objective is to make a good game. So if my vision is not the best, I want to improve it to make sure that the game is as good as it can be. So yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.